waiting on notification. Right on time. And boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this afternoon. Woo-hoo. We have an incredible uh, guest with us, one who's going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration, and that is none other than the artist No GMO. First of all, Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Well, alaikum salam, sir. Thank you so much for having me. Man, this is a, an extreme honor. And for those who, you know, may not know, you know, we grew up, um, I was in Chicago, but you were in LA. So we, but you know, we grew up with very similar backgrounds and, you know, in the nation and nation babies yes, and all right, that kind right. of good stuff. So this is amazing to see you still um, putting out your music. I saw on your Instagram page where you um, had just done something recently with your niece. How did that come about? Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Nasira, you know, on this wreck, I don't really talk about her being my niece because I don't want people to think that, oh, the reason why, you know, she did a record with me was because we're related. But no, she's just extremely talented. Mm-hmm. Um, I have been looking for someone to do the rap part. I actually originally did the rap part for that song. And I've been looking for someone to do the rap part on that song, Surely When. It's such a powerful song. And whenever I would rehearse my rap, my niece would all not excuse me, Hanazra would always mm-hmm. cut me off at that same part. And she just came and she would freestyle. And I would be like, hey. So I asked her mom if she it would be cool with her. Um, everybody know Harmony is her mother. Um, and um, I, if it, she was comfortable with her doing it, she says, yeah, if she wants to do it and she's comfortable, cool. And she wrote some of the, her rap parts. So, and it just, yeah, and it came out dope and got a lot of good attention. And, you know, she's a, that's a special little girl. She is definitely divinely guided and is a lover of Allah and gives him praise whenever anybody gives her any type of accolade. So, yeah, that's my baby. <laughs> Beautiful. My sister Miriam sends the greetings. Thank you all for watching the People's Podcast. Okay. Well, Sister Kia, for those, I mean, with no GMO, for those who may not know, <laughs> can you can you please talk about um, you know, your mother for a minute, you know, and her impact and you carrying on her legacy by doing music. Don't make me cry so early in the- <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I, I was just saying. <laughs> Oh man, okay, so those of you who do not know, my mother is not only is she Sister Sarita Muhammad in the Nation of Islam, but she is Sister Sarita Wright Muhammad in the world. She was signed to Motown um, at a very young age. She started off as a secretary, actually, for those of you who do not know, at Motown and um, was discovered humming in the hall. <laughs> and they wanted to start her off with demos. Um, so she's the first wife of Stevie Wonder, who is uh, my godfather, mm-hmm. and helped to raise me. Um, she's written songs such as Sign, Still Deliver, Blame It on the Sun, It's a Shame, you know, just to name a few. <laughs> just a few. But more importantly, you know, she has had such an impact on arts and culture in the nation of Islam. And mm-hmm starting with divine hands it was divine hands we were a sign language group that we that started in the um 90s and it was just my sister and i and then it got bigger to about eight of us with sister minister tony's daughter was in it sister valerie's daughter ayana was in it and her and aisha we had a lot of people that started to come apart and we started to really touch people we opened up for god's property and everything and she took that on yeah man it was yeah we blessed for sure and um you know she was and still is um, impactful in my life on what it means to continue her legacy i said that at her janaza and was a little confused i thought it just meant her legacy was to be a singer so i was focusing on singing and just that's all i wanted to do and um, until I really looked in depth at her life, like just a couple of years ago and realized she was so much bigger than just a singer. She was mm-hmm. a philanth- philanthropist. She was a person who was who had such integrity. I mean, so many people in this industry and in the nation respect and love her because of her love for Allah and the teachings and striving to be obedient. And then that's when I took on, you know, striving to be more like her in that way because she left such an impact on us. And the minister name made up a, a post just because of the work she was doing. And she became the representative of culture, um, arts and culture, cultural refinement. That post had never existed until my mom, by the grace of Allah, 
um, came about and gave us something more because we needed something. We were bored and we were ending, young youth was getting pregnant. There was all types of things going on mm. and we needed something to do to keep us occupied and that we could enjoy as well in the name of a lot at the same time. Beautiful. Yeah. Excellent, uh -huh. excellent. Well, I, I know, you know, may Allah be pleased and I'm sure she's very, yeah. your mom's is very happy with, you know, all of her children and grandchildren, especially you for taking that on to continue in music. Yeah. Um, what was it like growing up in Los Angeles? Man, uh, life for me growing up, you know, it's so funny. Someone recently just asked me that question and I grew up in a predominantly like middle class, upper class neighborhood. And then we would go to the mosque on Sunday and we would see something completely different. I would just see something like so out of the norm, like going outside and seeing homeless people and, you know, just, and that used to always just hurt me. But um, for the most part, life was great though. Growing up, when I think about like our younger years, like my mom was the first I, black woman to uh, play Mary Magdalene in the um, play Jesus Christ Superstar. Mm. And we used to travel with her, you know, first class here, then, you know, huge hotel rooms that look like apartments. And when we're younger, we don't, I didn't really understand who she was or anything like other type of life I was living. I literally was just living and I never looked at myself as someone different than anyone else. And, you know, performing art school, I did gymnastics. I started with gymnastics and then I went on to dance and singing. Um, <clears throat> but for my childhood, um, for the most part, it was great. My younger years, up until the age of about four, you know, were a little trying for me because, oh my God, I can't believe I'm about to talk about this. My, um, my biological father was, I thank a lot for him because he instilled something in me. And I think I'm just actually at this moment realizing what it even is. And, um, you know, Brother Torrance, for those of you who do not know, he used to actually help with training the E-team years, 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 years ago. Mm. But he wasn't so nice to my mom. <laughs> and um, I think that those younger years of seeing certain things and hearing something, certain things had a major impact on me as an adult. And um, I think I've been running so hard from not wanting that so bad that I actually have always ran into that same type of behavior when it comes to relationships. I don't even know what made me even just talk about that. But, um, you know, but for the most part, I just remember being happy all the time like and I loved my brother Jamal like I was like his his daughter so uh yeah um yeah I, I love growing up in the nation was heck of fun we all were cool from Atlanta to Chicago to New York to LA we were like a really big family like and I think that's something that we all need in order to like really, it takes a village to raise a child. And at the end of the day, whether you're older or younger, we need each other. So I loved how if I couldn't talk when my mom got really ill, I could talk to Sister Mina. I could talk to Sister Valerie. I could talk to Auntie Latan. I could talk to, um, what's her new name? Auntie Connie. That's what I know. <laughs> Auntie Con I could talk to anybody. There were so many people I could reach out to because we were really a big family. But um, yeah, I just remember going to award shows and and with my mom and like, are going, no, I think the strangest thing is when we would go to certain places and people would recognize her and they would like start freaking out. And I would be like, what the heck is wrong with those? I literally did not understand it. But I always recall this one moment, which has always kept me humble, was my mom came to Debbie Allen Dance Academy where we were, um, my sister and I were actually attending school there. And the music teacher, I guess, was a big fan of my mom's. And when my mom came in, he like got down on his knees and put his head down, was like, oh, and my mom grabbed him by his chin, like touched him by his chin and lifting up. He was like, sir, you don't bow for anyone but God. And when she did that, as so, she could easily be like, oh yes, thank you. Oh yes, oh, oh thank you so much. And no, she wouldn't even allow someone who even just appreciated her art to bow to her because not only did she want it to go to her head she didn't want him to think that she's bigger than god who gave her that gift mm -hmm. so yeah childhood was I, I had a great example by the grace of allah i had an excellent example 
Beautiful. Praise be to Allah. A lot of people showing you love in the comments. Yeah, um, praise be to Allah. Thank y'all for watching the People's Podcast. Yeah. You know, being at Safest Day um, in Chicago one year to see the um you pull up in the limo you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he, was, he wasn't driving limos and you just being like oh josh what's happening you know we, we <laughs> riding together come on hop in let's order some pizza i'm like okay right. you know, you know, you know. um how, how how did you stay humble with being you know in the industry and all of that uh i think it was um the fact that i grew up around in the teachings like you know if i were you know i, I don't know what was it if I were to, if with different circumstances and I wasn't, um, I didn't have the knowledge of self or even growing into having the knowledge of self, just the basis. Because a lot of people of my friends and family, like the, my friends that were in the mosque, they didn't have the same lifestyle as me. They didn't have the cars or the the money or the traveling. And for, they, they weren't doing stuff like that at that time. Now, a lot of them aren't doing that now by the grace of Allah. But, you know, at that time, that wasn't that, but I never looked at them something different because I always have seen someone for who they are and not what they have. Mm -hmm. You know, I could care less if you have all the Rolls Royces in the world, but if your heart isn't good, then you mean it's, it's pointless. All that, all these tangible things are pointless. So I think that that, um, that but I have to say, keep it 100. After my mom passed, I did become a little bit more cocky because I didn't have her to remind me that Takia, yes, you have these things. However, remember there's people who don't and your reasoning for wanting to sing in the first place. Like, you know, and the reason was, was we were coming out of the mosque all the time and I was seeing all these homeless people and my mom wouldn't let me do music at first. And she asked me, why did I want to sing another time? And I said, because I want to change the condition of our people. And that was the truth. I was, mm -hmm. I was tired of seeing that. I was tired. It, it hurt. It hurts to see that. And you can't do anything about it, you know? So, um, yeah, like I remember that year. Everybody always talks about that too. There was a couple of us. I ain't going to put nobody out there on blast though. Aisha. But no, but, <laughs> but yeah, we had a good time, man. It was, I mean, I was young. I couldn't rent a car. So of course I needed a limo. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what was it, what was it like, um, you know, I posted a picture of you with the Mozambian Soul as far kind, but you yeah. have such a, um, connection with him and yeah. being able to, to speak to him and see him. Yeah. Uh, what is it like to have a relationship with the minister? Ooh. Um, humbling. Well, I think I'm, I'm trying so hard not to cry because, you know, he always reminds us, you know, um, that we are always open to communicating with him because of how much our mother helped him. And, you know, there was a time that I was going through a really rough patch and my brother would always talk to him about me and he would never lie. I would want him to like, you know, she's not doing good. I'm like, can you just tell him that I'm doing great? Like, don't tell him I'm not doing good. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he had such beautiful, encouraging words for him to share with me. And when he shared with them, they were so touching. And um, it's just so humbling that I even have that access and I don't abuse it at all that, but I have the access to be able to say, I, you know, I want to reach out to the minister and talk to him or that I have grown close to people in his family. Like um, it's, it's really a blessing. And every time he comes around, he doesn't change his words. He's such his energy and aura is, I know heard minister Ishmael say one time, even his jokes have truth. And it's like, it's true. <laughs> it's true when he's joking. And it's like, that was a joke, but I, you were right though. That is actually true. And, um, <laughs> I, I think it's, it's, he is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful man and God in our midst today sincerely and uh, I appreciate my mom paving that way for us to be able to in that lane for us to be able to have that relationship with him I only wish that you know and pray that I can start to do my work so now that it's me who he sees and not just our mother and I pray that I can become that and embody her and beyond you know so yeah the minister he's whew, He's a cold brother. <laughs> cold oh, brother. Be to Allah. Yeah. Okay. What what um can you give us your fondest uh, memory of Stevie Wonder? 
Uh, oh God, there's so many. <laughs> he's, he's so goofy. I don't know. Um, my fondest memory. Okay, well, let me give you this. I just recently found out and had zero clue. So I one day was at the studio with him and we were just talking. And I said, uh, you know, how um, you think that things would have been different if you and my mom had, uh, if she would have gotten pregnant while you guys were married. And he said, I don't know what you're talking He was like, what are you talking about? She did, she was pregnant with twins. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> where did this story come from like where did you know you know but um unfortunately you know the children didn't the two twins didn't make it and uh, but um it was just interesting that she he shared that and I had like I had never heard that before from anybody you know because I've always felt like <clears throat> you know it was Allah ordained that to happen for us not to be his biological children because I feel like especially with her not being here and then being a part of that type of lifestyle because I know what I was starting to experience once my mom passed and I was for, around him so much I was living with him and everything so mm -hmm. and I began to change and I think if I would have grown up with that type of going to this household and seeing this here and then going to this household and having the freedom basically to do anything kind of that um, I would have been a little bit imbalanced for a very long time. So um, he just was explaining to me like, you know, that never was the case and like how much uh, the love for his mom, my, my mom was literally forever. He literally was at on Oprah and in the middle of his performance with his wife and children or in the front row, you know, says, I love you, Sarita. And it's not because he's trying to disrespect his family or anything, but because of the fact that she played such a big impact on setting the, the foundation of what a woman is supposed to be, of what it means to be uh, elegant, to be graceful, to be respectful, to all those things, to even be a little aggressive if you need to be, but at the right time, you know? So she set that foundation and he literally to this day cannot speak of her without getting emotional because I think he just knows how much um, she meant to him. And it was just the wrong timing. You know, they were young, <laughs> they were young. But yeah, that's probably one of the, when it comes to him, there's so many, cause he's goofy. Like he's super <laughs> goofy. You guys don't know, like who, those of you who do know, you know, but he is a goofy, person he likes to crack jokes he's always reminding me that you can't take Detroit out of him he's always Detroit mm -hmm. he's actually very hood okay <laughs> he, he speaks eloquently but he is actually very down to earth and yeah, okay. super chill so yeah, yeah Stevie's a mess <laughs> okay, excellent excellent and thank you all for watching people's continue to watch people's podcast being in LA you know, when you when you weren't on the hills and you came down, you know, to be in Long Beach or whatever the, the common area, I guess. Have you ever faced? But okay. <laughs> okay. But have you ever faced fear? And if so, how did you overcome that fear? Have I ever faced fear? Yes, ma'am. From coming from the hills and coming back down, I think I experienced more fear. Like after my mom passed and I was still living that life, I moved to New York and I got signed. I was mm -hmm. signed to EMI, and mm -hmm. I think that lifestyle was more fearful than anything that I could have gone through afterwards. Mm -hmm. And when I look back, I'm like, I cannot believe I am alive. Like, I cannot believe Allah gave me a second chance at life. Because when I, when I was in it, I was cool. I was, I thought I was fine. I didn't think there was anything wrong with my life. I'm like, man, I'm making money. I am, I'm living in this huge house. I got this huge condo. I got this car. I live in New York. I got this penthouse. I'm not thinking there's anything wrong with anything that um, I went through. And what, and it was so scary from drugs, from um, almost being killed. Like there was, so much that I went through in the world that I would 
pray to Allah that I never go back to that because that is not what uh, coming back down is what feels beautiful. The fact that I am now for like one of the first times for real, for real in a black neighborhood with amongst, I feel safe. I feel sane like that, that the fear here, I don't have fear here. I have fear for where I was and fear for where I came from. I'm cool. I don't want to go back to Calabasas. I don't want to go back to Beverly Hills. I don't need to stay in the city in Manhattan in New York. I'm good. That's not where I want to be. That's not for me. And I'm not interested in it. And I pray that I never do become interested in that type of lifestyle. Even if I do live, I don't become of it as I was. I became of that lifestyle of what happens in there. And Ooh, yeah. Ooh, that's flashbacks. Like, mm, yeah, that's not free. Coming down was a blessing. It was that, what I thought was up. Why you say when you high, I thought it was high, I was low. Yeah, I thought it was high and living my life, but I was really super, super low. And Sister Valerie, if you're in here like, oh man, sorry, I'm not going to cry. I'm trying not to. I'm sorry. It was like I had come around to the mosque a couple of times and a couple of Sundays, but it never got me to want to stick because, you know, I was gone for like 10 years. And one day I just said, I'm going to go to MGT class, which I had to restart processing for those of you who don't know the process and everything. And it was Sister Valerie, she was teaching the processing class. And it was the way she spoke and all the love that I got that made me, and there was nothing going in my life that was traumatic. I thought I was on a high still. I was like, oh, let me just go. To be seen is what really what it was. Mm -hmm. And didn't realize that I needed that. I not, I didn't need to be, I, I needed to be, I, need, I needed to see myself. And I, and I finally did. And after that day, I did not look back. I said, oh no, this is what is for me. And I thank you, Sister Valerie, so much, man. Allah literally put something in you to help really save my life when I didn't even know that I needed saving. I had no clue that I needed saving. And, um, sorry. But, um, I appreciate you so much. Like, yeah, Allah is, uh, whew, he's so on time. So, yeah, yeah, man, it's, I was trying so hard not to cry. Like everybody's always talking about me crying. So, but yeah. So yeah, that, that lifestyle is like nothing <clears throat> that I could ever <clears throat> wish on anybody. And I'll never tell someone, don't do it. All I would do is tell them what happened to me when I chose to. Mm -hmm. What happened to me, like me being drugged, me one drink at a party and drinking alcohol and me somebody slipping something in my drink and not waking up and not knowing anything i will tell you that oh you want to live that oh you want a boyfriend oh, okay you want to do that oh you want to fornicate oh that's what you want to do okay let me tell you what happened when i chose to let me tell you what the path that it led me to because it's never left led me to peace ever and you have your exceptions of the rule because maybe you're in the midst of your for asking forgiveness of allah but I wasn't, I thought everything I did was okay. You know, I thought everything that I was living and I would tell anyone whenever they experience trauma to not necessarily bathe in it, but to recognize it. Rec the trauma was me losing my mother and I didn't, I ignored it. I tried to suppress it with so many different other things. It was like, oh, yep, nope, uh, I'm going to the mosque. Okay, I'm starting to find hands again. Okay, I'm gonna go do this, I'm gonna do this hard. Okay, yeah, I could be secretary, yeah, I'm a lieutenant now, yeah. And it was like, I was just trying to silence the fact that I was, I was 18 years old when my mom passed and I'm missing my mother. And I don't know how to feel that. I don't know how to look at all you who love her so much. And every time I look at you, you remind me of her. I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to face that. So let me go somewhere where no one knows anything about me and I can create my own fantasy, my own world. And I don't have to be reminded of who I am and where I come from. So yeah, that was, that lifestyle was hell, 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 hell. Nothing about it. It was beautiful. Besides the creating of music. <laughs> well, praise be to Allah for you uh, coming back from that. My sister Naima says beautiful testimony. And uh, the Valerie says more praise be to Allah. Yes. Um, addiction has been real for many years um, and decades with, with us as a people in and out the nation. 
what advice would you give to the young people who are battling addiction, you know, how to beat it? Because you said you were on drugs, so how did you? Yeah. So you-, um, you know, for me personally, I, uh, I was always chasing what other people felt. I think because I had knowledge of self and I was, I had not some type of knowledge of self, it was easier for me to, to be like, okay, this is, because I was always chasing, you know, drugs are nothing but enhance whatever it is that you're feeling on the inside anyway. So when people would act wild and insane and crazy when they were high, I never felt that on the end. So I never got to that point, like where people around me would feel, but just, when people say that weed is the gateway to other drugs, it is a thousand. I would have never thought that I've ever tried cocaine. I would have never thought that I would have ever tried an ecstasy pill. I would have never thought that I would have done that ever in my life. Never. I was like, okay, okay, I'll start smoking. Okay, cool. I would never do that. I could never, I would see other people and be like, oh my God, how could you? And it wasn't until I was around someone that I trusted that I think I'll try it. I'll just try it. Like, I trust you. And it was a woman. It was one of my closest friends, you know? And I was like, oh, you know, I'll try it. And it was my grandmother's neighbor who randomly told me when I came to visit her after my grandmother passed. And she said, be cautious of anyone who offers you drugs, not anyone who does drugs with you, but who comes up to you and just says, hey, here, you want some drugs? Here, you want to smoke? Here, you want some weed? Because, because who, who are they being sent by? What is their purpose of wanting you to do that? You know, they're not asking like, hey, I got this blunt. You want to smoke with me? Like, no, they're here. I just want to give you weed. And I had an incident with someone and I will, they were my name, name, were name, they were remain nameless where um, I came to help them out um, with some stuff. And I was still in the world, but just trying to still find myself about if I was going to come back into the nation. This is about maybe five years ago. And that's what they did. This person offered me weed. They were like, oh, my boyfriend sells weed. You, I'm going to have him drop you off something. I'm just like, why would you offer, you know, like about, you know, why would you just offer that to me? Like, and it was so, and I will never forget what she told me because when she did that, I was like, oh, wow, this could be a real snake. Like this person could be, who who sent you? You know, because God didn't send you. You know what I'm saying? I, and I know for a fact he didn't. And, you know, anybody who's on drugs, I just promise you, it's it doesn't end well. You think you have control, but the life, the light, the joy that I feel. I feel so high when I listen to the minister. I feel so high taking my vitamins, taking, you have, you have, have you ever had a ginger cayenne and lemon shot? That shot can make you feel like you didn't have all the drugs in the world. Like the, what it does to your insides. It, I just remember how disgusting my face looked. Like I just looked dark because my mind was clouded and dark. It was shade, there was no sun. I was literally darkened. And when I stopped, my lips got clearer, my face got clearer, just like everything about me just got so much clearer. My mind, the way I thought, I was quicker. I I used to say all the time, like, you know, I'm not like all these rappers and other artists. I don't need drugs to write music. And then once I started doing drugs, I needed the drug to write music. But the music that I write now, with a clear mind and understanding of what my purpose is with music. Oh my God, I would have never thought that I could create like that. Drugs is, is, is not gonna get you anywhere. Smoking weed, the, what they're putting in the weed today, I'm, I'm looking at certain people and I'm just like, wow, certain lifestyles. And I'm just like, man, I just went to the, <clears throat> the beauty supply store and I walk in and it reeks. I'm trying to support a black owned business and it just reeks of marijuana. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. And I'm like, man, I can't judge my people because I was there. And so I still want to support this black owned business. And she just was so not conscious of me being in her store, like at all. And it saddened me. I was just like, wow, our pe- we're really dead. We are really mentally dead. And until all of us get, get right, none of us are right. So we uh, we have to stick together and we have to make sure that we're, we're 
we're striving to be a reflection. Like when we say I'm a reflection of you, we say I'm a reflection of you because we're talking to the God that's inside of you, not the person who we see on the outside, not who what you're trying to show me, but because there's a God inside of you. And there's times that we fight that. Sometimes we, we fight and we fight and we fight that God. Like, nah, I'm not letting, I ain't no God, I ain't no. We wanna fight that. We wanna fight that so much, but that is who we are. There's no way that we God could have made us in his image and we not be of him and we not be like him. It's impossible. So anybody who's suffering with drugs, honestly, I can't tell you what to do with that. I can just tell you where what happened with me while I was there and where I am right now. By the grace of Allah, I have no desire for it. It took, I'm gonna be honest, when I first came back to the mosque, um, I was uh, still smoking when I first started with processing and I came and I told Sister Valerie, I was like, man, I want to do Ramadan, but I don't want to, I don't want to smoke. <clears throat> I want to do it. I want to try to do it. And she was like, Sister Takia, you know, she gave me the great advice and saying, do what you have to do and make sure I just do what I don't do it for anyone else. Do it because I know I want to, because you, you can fall back. And I remember telling myself, let me make some bean soup. And what I made, I said, okay, I'm not going to smoke to eat this bean soup. Because then it became, when I came back, oh, I need to smoke to eat now. Now it's, now it's you know, silliness like that. And then I said, I'm not going to smoke when I eat this bean soup. That first bowl of bean soup, I was in, uh, actually in Detroit visiting my brother. That first bowl of bean soup is what stopped me from smoking. That's what saved my life. That's what stopped me. I didn't need it. I was like, I can, I can make. And it was a bomb bowl of bean soup. Just for y'all know, my bean soup is lit, no, but it was that, it was the Navy beans removing toxins from my body that helped me to be able to get back into my right mind and my conscious mind and be able to say, be gone with that. And I don't need that. So yeah, it's, it's definitely not worth it. And I can only tell you, share with you what happened to me when I went through those things. I can't tell you what to do. I don't know what your journey is, but I can just share with you that it took away 10 years of my life when I could have been doing so much more for sure. I missed out on a lot from doing drugs. Yes, ma'am. Well, praise be to Allah. I'm glad that uh, that you are back, strong, and you know, focused. Yes. Um, when can we hear some of your uh, music? Hey. Okay, so I'm actually gonna be releasing an album on September 28th, which is my son's birthday. He'll be one years old. I, I'm taking my time with it. Um, I actually am re just re today. I'm releasing myself and Hanazra single. It's available actually right now on all platforms. <laughs> so you can go cop that. It's called Shirley Wynn. It's no GMO featuring Hanazra. H-A-N-A-S-A-R-A. -A -A. And um, it's called Shirley Wynn. It's a dope record. You know, uh, Hanazra is rapping on it. <clears throat> I'm singing and rapping on it, but um, it's a, it's an amazing record that I really pray that and um, it takes a great effect and expands worldwide. Sincerely, yeah, but yeah, you can definitely um, calc me out on i uh, iTunes, Apple Music, Pandora, and then I'm releasing another single um, in about two weeks. Mm. Yeah, so I. Are you putting a, a compilation together? Um, yes. I'm actually about to do, I'm actually about to do um, a visual for it yeah, yeah. tomorrow and next week. Crazy. So you can get an idea about what it is that, you know, what it is that you're going to feel for the, what the album is even going to be like. Okay, great. Do you, um, um, Advice for mothers, future mothers. Uh, don't, don't, don't spend time talking about, I need to prepare, I need to prepare, I need to prepare. You'll never be prepared for what motherhood is. Like, never. Mm -hmm. I am 35 years old, okay? I know I don't look it, not as funny, but... <laughs> Nah, like seriously, I'm 35 years old and I thought, okay, I'm at an age where I'm older, a lot more wise. I can handle being a mother. Do you know? I was in labor for five days, first of all. Okay. I had a very interesting labor and delivery. 
Um, you know, my son actually, his fluid level was low and I was blessed to have a Muslim sister in the hospital with me, Sister Marisa. She, um, she came all the way down from like literally an hour and a half drive to be there with me for five days. Um, and also um, she uh, like really helped me get through like be there to answer the doctors. No, you don't need to do that. Oh, do that. You know, so I had to, they were trying to get me to have a C-section immediately. And I said, no, we will wait. Is he, is his heart okay? Is he, is he, he's good? Okay, then we're going to wait. I waited up into the last minute, you know, to, uh, I was like nine centimeters dilated. Like it was crazy. And I ended up having to have an emergency C-section because of other breaches, because of, um, my temp my heart rate was not going down and I was super high. But after birth, I was so tired. <laughs> I was like the first month and a half, like even now, like when you think you, when you want a second, you don't get a second, you know, you don't get a minute to say, oh, I, I just want to go to the store by myself. You know, especially when we're striving to do what we're supposed to do as, as far as breastfeeding our child, you know, and keeping that connection. I don't want him on a bottle like that, you know. So it's um, just be prepared that you're going to be tired and um, can't do anything about it. You may feel sometimes like, hey, I just want to just say, hey, don't just go to sleep. But you can't because he's a baby and he doesn't know any better or she doesn't know any better. And you just got to. Yeah, there's nothing like motherhood. Like seriously, applaud all mothers, all mothers out there. There is nothing, yes, seriously. There is nothing like motherhood or childbirth. No, none of y'all brothers could ever. Y'all would never, okay? Y'all get to go still watch the game. We gotta go in the other room. We gotta take care of the baby. We gotta stay, we're the ones staying up until five o'clock, six o'clock in the morning when the baby does it, you know, it's fussing cause he just fighting his sleep, you know, trying to figure out this new world. But I definitely think that, um, just don't don't think too much about it. Don't think about, about all the stuff or the money and things that you want to have in order to have this life for your child. Because I provide very well, and and his father provide very well for um, our son, and um, it, it still ain't enough. Like <laughs> so, so you can have all the money in the world, and there's going to be more that you want to do, more that you want to give, more that you you know. And just know that just take it one day at a time. Just you know, don't think too far into the future. Just let it happen. Just let Allah do his thing. Because he got you. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. And once again, how can we get your music? You can, um, once again, you can, um, on all platforms, Apple Music, iTunes, on uh, Spotify, Pandora, YouTube, or, you know, I'm everywhere. I just actually, I'm revamping my whole lineup, so... Inshallah, you know, I'll be able to get, give you guys some more music and, and you guys love it and enjoy it. And, you know, give me your feedback. Let me know what you need and what you think and what you want. Because I want to give the people what they want on the people's podcast. That's true. <laughs> Speaking of what the, what the people want, the people want, I mean, you give us, I mean, eight, you ain't got to give us 16, you give us something, give us a little, a little, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, that's fine. Uh, yeah, okay, so look, this record is actually a song that a lot of people from Moss 27 know. Moss number 27, that's right, that's right. <laughs> no, a lot of from Moss 27, uh, we know. It's actually, my mom's song is called Water. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's dope. Okay, here we go. I'm a rich girl, poor girl, African queen. Got a slight reputation, cause sometimes I'm mean. I can be anything that I want to be, cause my heart is free. I'm a diamond rough, I'm a pop. Of gold, got a sweet body, but my spirit's old. Looking for someone to come from my home. Yes, I'm water. I'm seeking a higher level, baby. I'm water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I'm water. Yeah. Trying to run upstream now, baby. I'm water.
Yeah, I said. <laughs> okay, hold on. I'm, I'm about to come on the remix. I said. Uh oh, hold up, hold up, Josh. It's about to go down. They don't know. First of all, they don't really know. I need to interview you. Okay, uh, you're the inter the interviewer needs to be interviewed. They don't know about your uh your plays and your singing and the dancing. They don't know what's up. You gotta make sure you gotta remind them sometimes. Sometimes you gotta give them a friendly reminder. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, uh, thank you. Praise be to Allah. Thank you, thank you. I wasn't really ready, but I was ready. <laughs> um, you're, um, you have a beautiful uh, you had a beautiful post on your Instagram where you were playing your mother, or I guess on YouTube in front of your son, but I saw like oh, one of these stories like, like a couple of weeks ago and stuff like that. Yeah. So is that, um, how can, how can we hear your mother sing? Like, like what Oh my about? God. Google Safari does say Sarita Wright, S-Y-R-E-E-T-A, last name W-R-I-G-H-T. Uh -huh. All you got to do is press Google and uh, she's everywhere. She There's interviews of her. That's another thing. That's the blessing I have about having, you know, I when I stop complaining about not having my mom, because so many people don't have pictures, don't have videos. They don't have anything to remember their parents or some, their loved ones by. All I have to do is Google her name and I can see interviews. I can hear her voice. I can see pictures. Actually, the single that I'm that I dropped today with Hanazar and I is featuring my mom. There's the beginning of the record is a voice voicemail from her. So um, she's actually featured on the record as well. So, I mean, how dope is that? Like, I'm so blessed. Like, and she left a legacy for her children too, so that we all can benefit from. And I want to be able to do that for my children as well. That's the goal. That's for my son. You, anybody want to see my? Y'all want to see my son? Yeah, let's see your son. Let's see. Hold your on, I'm about to go get him. Hold on. Yeah, I'm doing that. I'm doing a 60 second commercial break for all <laughs> the producers of the People's Podcast. I want to thank everyone who's continued to su support and show love to the People's Podcast. Please cash app or make a donation to cash app the People's Podcast. We I'm very grateful to all of the sponsors of the People's Podcast. Um, starting with my brother. Arashad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera, a drone. He does television and film editing. My sister Miriam, ABC I Love Me. Oh, sweet. I'll come, come right back to Sakia. I got to do the 60 okay. Um, Her books are both on Amazon. Make sure you go get them. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy. We love our um, tiny dancers. Make, uh, make sure you get your daughter signed up virtually. She's teaching ballet all across the country. Nations Auto Sales, LLC. Out of St. Louis, he sells cars, trucks, and get them right to you. Out of LA, the MTS Car Bros, any make, any model, any year, 30 to 50% off. Make sure y'all reach out to our brother out in LA. Raising Black Millionaires, Sister Tia Muhammad, economic empowerment and development through flashcards. Uh, brother Kenneth Muhammad, Bowtie Maker Extraordinaire. He'll ship bow ties to you all across the country. Thank you very much. The Detroit Mecca Project from Brother Kamal. It's in Detroit. They fixing up the house, the home, the houses in Detroit to make it a safe and decent place to live. Thank you very much. Brother Chantel X, he pays truck drivers weekly. He specializes in refrigeration. Thank you very much, Brother Chantel. The Real Hip Hop Network, they pay, they get you can get paid per stream. So let's make sure we support our own. If you have singing and dancing, whatever you want, put your stuff on the Real Hip Hop Network platform and get paid. Okay. Brother Jabbar Muhammad, Client First Constructions painting, carpentry, flooring, plumbing, etc. in the Chicago area and Memphis, Tennessee area as well. The Hip Hop Detox, Brother Enoch, who I just interviewed, he also shouted you out in the comments. Um, they teach a holistic style and approach into schools, working with the youth. Thank you very much for Hip Hop Detox. Dr. Henry M. Carter, King Henry Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Service in Chicago. And my father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, abdusharif.com. Also, my two books, um, Cleopatra, which is a children's book. Shout out to um, Sister Sakia if you want to get a children's book, Cleopatra on Amazon, <laughs> and No Cloud and No Excuse, uh, both of which are Amazon. I thank everybody for sponsoring and making donations. Thank you, Sister Lovin, for always showing love in the comments. Okay, so Sakia, let's see your son. He's sleeping. But okay. And what is his name? His name is Faik Supreme Muhammad. Faik actually means supreme and it also means the door opener to heaven 
Mm. Um, and Supreme, um, of course, we know Supreme Muhammad. He is actually four months old, just the 28th. He just turned four months on the 28th. He's a big boy, though. He's like wearing six month clothes. But yeah, and shout out to Brother Enoch, too, man. He, he, uh, we started, me and Brother Vincent, Allah started hip hop detox out here in LA, and we used to do it, and it was oh, so successful. So, you know, it was that that reminded me that I could do music and do it in a righteous way and still be swaggy and still be dope and not have to be corny. You know, you don't have to do just because you're talking positively doesn't mean you you, you got to be corny, you know. So, you know, it, it was that um, platform that helped me that. So thank you, Brother Enoch. I appreciate you, Brother. Praise be to Allah. And uh, thanks to everybody who's watching and usually uh, show love in the comments. Um, your son, what has been the... Uh, the most life-changing thing about you know having a son man <sighs> uh patience um you know i can't give this back you know <laughs> i can't be like you know what i mean some people could you know but it's like i can't be like you know what i changed my mind you know facing things front on and having faith that everything is going to be okay regardless you know I I can say that um for sure that my faith level um uh, was well, so hold on for a second Danny okay while well, she's dealing with that Mimi said oh he's so adorable Shakir who never watches the people's podcast unless big celebrities are on says Josh doesn't know about kids Shakir, please um Thank everybody for watching. I got some great guests coming up this week. I want to make sure that we shout them. I mean, my schedule for next month, the Savior's in February. It's about to be crazy. We have some amazing guests uh, coming yeah. up. Say he much. is cute. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that the most, the biggest thing was the probably, um, yeah, my faith level was so low. Like, I didn't realize how much like this, having faith in Allah and knowing that he got it. Like he got this, like he, he's, he wants the best for all of us. Like, and, um, you know, that's one thing I learned after having him is that, you know, when I was going through what I went through, you know, I had to, uh, when, and when I was giving birth, the thoughts came to my mind because not everybody makes it. Not everybody makes it after giving birth. The, the percentage of black women that die during childbirth is high. It's not, it's not low. So I, those thoughts, I'm like, what is going to happen if I, you know, I had no choice. There was times, you know, when I, those contractions, oh my God, you can't call on anybody. Nobody can help you. No one can save you. Not an epidural, not a, not, none of that is going to save you from feeling pain of childbirth. It's not, it's not going to happen. And I remember calling my, at one point I was crying and I just was like, I want my sister. And I think I wanted my sister because I wanted my mom and that's the closest thing. You know, I wanted my mom there. So, and I remember Harmony just, she was oh, through the phone, just so powerful. I love her. She was just saying, Takiya, you need to take this time. No one can help you call on a lot. This is the time that you depend on him. And from that moment forward, that's what I did. And that's what I've been striving to do to this day is that to regardless anything happens, I have to call on a lot and know that he has my best interest at heart and he wants the best for me because I deserve that. And I am a God. I am the second self of God at that. And it's just a reminder that I can, I the more, I, this boy got me looking at so many lectures cause you know, I don't let him watch certain stuff. I done listened to so many lectures from the minister and learned so much stuff that I had no idea. Like, really, that, this is crazy. So he has me on my toes to better myself as a believer so that I could be a good example for him. And I don't just talk some talk that I can be an example for him to see so that when he grows, he can marry a woman and that sister come to me and say, thank you. For do, thank you for raising this guy because he he's a good brother. I want a sister to come to say that to myself and his father. You know, I want I want that that opportunity. So, yeah, man, that's it's, it's changed my life forever. I can't can't look back now. <laughs> what do you do for fun? Uh, oh, I'm boring. <laughs> okay, what for fun? What is fun to me? Uh, probably just act. I'm just goofy sometimes. I'm hecka sarcastic. I like making up scenarios and like just acting them out. 
like my, my like my niece and I like she'll just say something and I'll be and I'll just play off of it like oh my god I can't believe that you would do that and then she'll be like what I can't believe you would do that so just be dramatic I'm a Sagittarius okay so I'm heck of dramatic sometimes now I'm dramatic in the right way and not the wrong way <laughs> but yeah that's what's fun to me like um music is fun recording and writing music that's fun that's not a job that's fun for me that's just something that's embedded in me and that lives in me so anything arts is fun it's fun to me to talk about the teachings it's fun to me to uh help the youth like those things are fun like i used to be the after school teacher um at mui when we were open Okay, I'm sorry. <sighs> We're never coming back. Nah, but I used to be the after school teacher at MUI, and um, that I love that. Like watching just the students grow and flourish. And I had some students that had um, like autism and certain things, and having their parents come to me and tell me, like, "Man, your acting class that because I did an arts as well as academics. That oh my God, this class was really helping him with communication." And I'm like. And not knowing that's what I'm doing. I'm just doing what it is I love to do and sharing it with someone else and mm -hmm. striving to do it with love. And I have I'm so many people's auntie because of it. And I, I love I, I love it. I'm not, I think a lot like, man, those are those are fun things to me. I'm pretty like chill. A lot of things that were fun to me are just not fun anymore. Like I don't talk on the phone all day. Like I don't, I, that, that, that's not fun anymore because there's only so much you can talk about before it turns into something else. So I'm pretty to myself, just raising my son and striving to get this music done and out there to the people like those, those things are fun. That's, that's my fun. That's my escape that being able to do those things. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. all right. Speaking of music, um, if you could choose um, outside of, of course, Stevie Wonder, Mm -hmm. But your favorite album of all time, what would it be? Oh, that's hard. <laughs> My oh, okay, no, it's not. It's not hard, actually, at all. Brandy, Full Moon. Okay, okay. Literally, oh, just thinking about that gave me a heart attack. No, like, literally, Brandy is the god of music in the industry. If you're in the industry, you know that everybody looks to Brandy for how to do runs, to hear her ear music and to hear certain notes, y'all don't understand. Like people, and she, it's been this way for so long and people really sleep on her, you know, maybe because she's not, so to speak, thought in her way, you know, with the booty shorts and everything and she's chocolate or whatever the case may be, but she's so, but in the industry, people behind the scene, like you can go to the studio and say, I want that, can you EQ my voice to that Brandy sound? And they know what you're talking about. Cause she, you can't, I love Beyonce, love her. She's beautiful, amazing. But that, that is not a set tone that like you can go in the studio and be like, give me that Beyonce tone. Like Brandy has, Beyonce has taken notes from Brandy. Okay. Like there's so many, Brandy is just mm, vocally just a genius. She hears bends and notes the way no one does like I don't know how she does it like I practiced that album to be more comfortable with singing because I was so I was taught to sing straight like straight notes so like I didn't really sing like that and it wasn't until that album did I learn how to do riffs and runs and and oh just mimicking her like God, that album is phenomenal. I'm gonna say you will never let you like oh. oh my god, I love her. <laughs> okay, so you're saying full moon, not the ever popular never say never. No, no, mm. no. Never say never was cool. She had a couple of records that are on there that were dope. Yeah. Full moon, Roddy Jerkins, Roddy Jerkins did that. Okay. Yeah, 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 but never say you know that. why? It was emotional. It was emotionally true because she was at the time, you know, I don't want to slack the gossip, but she was at the time. <laughs> she was at the time with dealing with Rodney. So they were working together and dealing with each other. So just like Lauren Hill and uh Wyclef. Yeah, 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 yeah. That oh yeah, that's another album. Whew. Jesus, that's another album. Yeah, like it there's something that happens when when a musician, two musicians come together to make music, 
Um, you can make some of the be most beautiful music or you can make music that, you know, depending on how great or strong the bond is, or you can make very mediocre. The music that you make with, the, with an artist that you're with will de can determine what your relationship is like. Seriously, how your bond is. If you're with another artist and you guys are two artists and you create together and you create something whack, more than likely your relationship is whack too. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. I'll just say it. I'm sorry. I'm keeping it real. It's, it's the truth, though. <laughs> I'm just fat. Oh, man. That's probably why I never, never shut up. <laughs> Dallas Austin is um him and you know with T. Um, he was with Chili and like some of the early uh, I saw on, on one of his interviews and he was like yeah and he was with them when they made some of their best music. So that makes sense. Exactly. I'm trying to tell you, like when you when you have that type of bond, something it's something. You know, it's like a marriage. Even if you're not dating the person that you're with, when a producer and an artist come together to create music or the, or the writer come together to create music, it's like a marriage. And the, and the song that you create is your child. So when you come to, you, you don't want no ugly baby. You want you, so when you, you gotta love the person that you with, you fall in love with the producer. And that's a lot of times why a lot of people in the industry get that emotion confused they think because they have this high um affinity for this person that it means i'm supposed to be with you but it doesn't it doesn't always mean that you got to know how to differentiate the two that yes we may have this strong care but what is it like outside of here what is your mind you got to think deeper into it if you're trying to go around that that route because i've had very strong relationships with people that what the producers and writers that i'm with and they started to fall in love and i'm just like hey i'm not here to fall in love i'm here to make a change and make money at the time. Shoot, I was signing EMI too. I'm like, I got a quota. <laughs> I'm not here to date you. But yeah, that's it happens all the time. It's a strong passion that you just feel it. The music, music is so powerful. It, it's it sends chakras throughout your body. It can give you, put you in the mood for whatever it is that you need to be in the mood for, even if it has no words. Just the instrumentation can do that to you. So. Yeah, you better be careful what we listening to because we end up doing something crazy. We talking about hit him up. Next thing you know, you went to go rob a bank. <laughs> we, we gotta be a little cautious. That's why I appreciate people like Nilam, you know, who's out here doing music that is uh, elevating and fun and still dope and still fire. Like, you know, even with Anu, like, you know, they weren't necessarily doing Muslim music, but they did music that was positive and fire and it was still dope talking about love, talking about true stuff and still in respect of themselves and others. So that's the lane that I'm trying to be on. And I'm trying to create the lane of um, being able to do that, being able to rap one second and then sing the next one, you know, being able to do some opera, being able to do some acting, like all of it, you know, cause I've been blessed with all those talents. So y'all see a little bit more, more and more of all of those things, you know, especially once we come out of this pandemic cause I'm tired of being inside. <laughs> I can imagine okay. I can, I, I've been missing this stage and I've been writing because I'm like, okay, gotta something we got to work on something together because I actually have a really good idea for um, a play. Okay. I ain't telling it on here because, you know, we got, we got some thieves. You never yeah. know who listening. We'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Um, I just want to thank you again for coming on. Uh, yes, can you give us, will you ever write a book about your life? About my life. Um, I actually was in the middle of writing a book about my life. Um, I just have to be cautious because, you know, my mother's legacy is important as well. So I got, you know, about not telling too much of her personal because it's her story and she never told it. So I don't want to tell it for her. Been even asked about even doing, doing a, a bioptic for her. And I'm like, I, I don't think that we're, we should be telling her story. She's not here to tell it. So, mm. but, um, for myself a book uh it's possible it's possible i actually started a book and did three chapters of it and then stopped okay, okay, okay. so um I, what was it called the book was called um oh how it changed my life if i do come out with a book that's what it, it'll be called yeah. how it changed my life and the it is what you'll have to read about is what was the it that changed my life and made me because a lot of times things can come about in our life and either we accept that 
I have responsibility for this. This only happened because I allowed it to or because I did it. Until we can face the mirror and do that in our lives, we won't get anywhere. So that's basically what this book would be about, about having to face yourself in the mirror hmm. and deal with that. And, you know, right on. I got one last question for you. One uh, last question. Yeah, yes. Um, what would you like your legacy to be? Mm, that's a great question. I want my legacy to be that she was real. I want my legacy to be that regardless of any, and I've been told that many of times that regardless of any circumstance, I am true to me. I'm not trying to be somebody else. I'm not trying to, I want them to say that she was real and authentic, no GMO um, mm -hmm. at all times, whether it was in the wrong or in the right, or she was true to that. And she didn't hide that or fake that, or I stopped coming to the mosque, not because something happened, but because of the fact that I didn't want to fake the fact that I wanted a boyfriend. I was like, I want a boyfriend. I want to try that. And I'm not going to be in the mosque while I do that. So I, I left and started dating Neo. I was like, Hey, this is what I want to do. And yeah, I dated Neo for like, he <laughs> <laughs> that, face, that face is so random. Yeah, let me not start really spilling tea. <laughs> yeah, I, I dated him for like a year, but um, no, yeah. So like that she was real. I honestly want to, my legacy to be that she is real and authentic in everything it is that she touches. When I sing, I sing from a place of really no GMO, of passion. I try to embody whatever it is that I sing about. If I'm acting, if I'm speaking, if whatever it is I do, I want in every lane for them to say that she is her authentic self, that she is real. She is no GMO. Yay. Wait, let me just say this real quick before you end anything, Brother Josh. I just want to really thank you because you've this is not the first time that you've asked me about being on the People's Podcast. And I really commend you on what you're doing right now. And much. once uh, again, I you know I spoke with you about it, but you know, sincerely I pray that Allah be pleased with your mother because I looked up to her literally probably my whole life. I was like, I want to be that vanguard. I want to do that. I want to be just like that. You know, and she talk about a legacy that was left, you know, and you are doing such a good job with continuing that legacy in a different form and giving people a platform to tell their story so they can possibly help somebody else because we don't do that enough. We don't help each other enough. We do our own thing and we separate ourselves and we're like, hey, we got this click over here and that click over there is doing something. But this podcast is bringing everybody together to where you ask questions to where if somebody has an idea about doing something, they can say, oh, okay. I remember I heard such and such say this, like this might be a good idea. Oh, I saw that she went through this and shoot, I know I can overcome this if she went through that. So, you know, I just think that it's really a blessing. And you're, and some of us that you're even probably coming on, you're reminding us of who we are by having, asking these questions and you're saving our lives as well. So I pray that Allah continues to bless you with this podcast and it gets bigger, 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 bigger with your books and all your endeavors because Allah really, I believe has a hand in it. And you are definitely truly blessed and appreciate it for sure. Thank you very much. Well, I yeah, thank you very yeah. much, though, GMO. Yay. I look forward to uh, promoting your music. I, um, once you do the visuals and everything, come on back and let you know premiere. Got you. Got That's you for cool. sure. And please, thank you so uh, much. Please give your family the greetings and may Allah yes, continue to bless you all. Thank all you right. all for the sacrifice. Thank y'all. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Josh. Mm -hmm.